Hello, and welcome to Sobercast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting Sobercast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. So I'm just going to introduce this as part two of the uh, uh, the Ego Factor Workshop with Tex T and friends here in Berlin, Germany. Hey. <laughs> and uh, yeah, part two, we did part one, which I'll be sending that in. I'll be sending these recordings in uh, after we finish today's, and then I can uh, send them on to Tim. And... Uh, I can't remember where we left off. Inability to accept frustration. Inability to accept frustration? Okay. Great. Yeah. So we already we already talked about the uh here we go. Oh no 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 no. Okay. I don't know. I'll find it. <laughs> here it is. Uh so, so we already did uh, 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 ego by two definitions. We did recognizing immaturity. Mm-hmm. When I bring the character of my uh, characteristics of a child, my queen baby, into my adult life, what happens? What does that look like? And one of our uh, three characteristics of the uh, queen baby is inability to accept frustration, and that's where we, where we stay, uh, starting today. The last sentence we read from last time was, the king or the queen lies deep below the surface, far out of sight. <laughs> yeah, scary stuff. That's why we need to be exposed to this. Inability to accept frustration. The last trait carried over from infancy is the, and I circled, inability to accept frustration. In an obvious sense, this inability is another aspect of the king within, since one of the, and I underline, prerogatives of royalty is to proceed without interruption. I also circled that little uh, section that my prerogative of, of royalty is to proceed without interruption. Do not interrupt me. Do not stop me. Get out of my way. If you're not going to serve me, uh, you're going to make my resentment list because you're not doing what I think because I'm the queen. Underline, for the queen to wait is an affront to the royal rank. Circle, a slap at Her Majesty. Yeah. The ramifications of this inability to endure frustration are so widespread, and the significance of much that occurs in the behavior of the alcoholic is so far-reaching that it seems advisable to discuss this trait under a separate heading. As already indicated, on the surface... The underlying, the inability of the king or queen to accept frustration is absolutely logical. Mm-hmm. Underline. The wish of the king is the law of the land, and especially in the land of infancy. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> underline. <laughs> Any frustration is clearly a direct threat to the status of his majesty, whose whole being is challenged by the untoward, and I've circled, interruption. Now, you see, what that description reminds me of why I had a hard, such a hard time, because, you see, my, 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 uh, my ego did not want to give up the throne. It wanted to run the show. And that's because, I, you know, I, I'm... I'm the queen, and that, that's why it was so hard for me to build that new habit of having a new power, because my ego just would not give up the throne, and, and it's really funny, because when I see this this uh, 
drunk, insane woman on the throne with a with a crooked crown, and I'm like, there's no power greater than me. And and it's like as as I like to say, if if the power of me is running my life, it's actually ruining my life. All you have to really do is add an I to I ruin the show. I run the show. I ruin the show on my power. So just remember, you'll always be the queen of ruin, <laughs> especially you, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody that's just, that for anybody that's just listening to this, for this, uh, <laughs> Take it as a to this, to this I recording. I am the queen of ruin. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, uh, Daniel celebrated 30 days. Uh, how many days do you have now, Daniel? Um, 40, <laughs> It's the newest member of of of, of uh, our our troop here, and he's our little baby. He's also baby my queen. And, yeah, and, and, and he, he's, he's also the queen of ruin, and he's also my new travel agent. And I'm just putting that on this recording so everybody knows when we refer to Daniel that that he's. <laughs> He's also he's also a double agent. He's also the agent of trouble. So um, <laughs> I just flirted with me. <laughs> See, and now he thinks I'm flirting with him. Well, you know, it, it, <laughs> but, but Daniel is 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 a great example of we are not a glum lot. We are not a glum lot. We are not a, a glum, glum lot. lot. We are not a glum lot. You know what that means, Daniel? No. That means we are not boring. We are fun. Oh, yeah. We are fun. Glum means oh, bummer, negative. You know. So anyway, even more okay. significant is another aspect of this underlying inner imperiousness. <sighs> Underline, behind it lies the assumption that the individual should not be stopped. Again, this is logical if one considers how an absolute monarch operates. Uh, underline, he simply does not expect to be stopped. Circle, as he wills, so will he do. <laughs> underline, this trait. Circle, persisting in the unconscious. So this trait is, is under the surface, and it's just like, uh, when I first got sober, I couldn't see it, because all I saw me uh, as was a was a, a, a sweet, helpful, loving person. I, I, and so, you know, reading this, is just like, so all of this is under the surface, I'm a monster. <laughs> you know, but it's just like, whoa, I think I'm the queen, and, and I throw tantrums if I don't get my way. You know, thank you, thank you, Dr. Kibo, for pointing this out to me so I can uh, see it. So the persisting, in, uh, this trait, persisting in the unconscious underline, furnishes a constant pressure driving the individual forward. And that's like being in a hurry. I want everything now, now, now. So I'm always in a hurry, I'm always in a hurry. And that's why I've been talking to one of my sponsors a lot about this lately. The importance of the pause button. If I hit a pause button, if I realize I'm in a hurry and you know my heartbeat goes up, I'm anxious, I get out of my way, you're in my way, you know, oh, okay, well, Her Majesty needs this to happen now. If I hit that pause button, what does pause mean? It like it like if you're on a CD player or a I'm old school cassette cassette tape player, you hit the pause button, it stops right there. That's why the importance of that pause button. Because if I hit pause, that means that means I have uh, noticed, I have observed that I'm in my alcoholism and that I'm about to get myself into trouble if, if I continue with this character defect or this fear or this drama or this self-talk of, of, oh, my God, oh, my God, you know, uh, please, please, 
so so that pause button is so important because I need to be stopped. But see, I have to pay attention and realize, ooh, I'm with the wrong power. Pause. And when I hit the pause button, I'm stopped. And you see, I, I have found that my higher power is the only power that can slow me down so I can I can see reality. And these Tebo papers that actually talked about that, about how uh, about how, how people in AA, they can actually s sit in the same place and let things happen instead of having to race ahead and, and push and shove and, and demand. Yeah, so there, there we have that again, the, the infantile ego. So, always use your pause button. Wear them out. You can you can you can reorder on Amazon. And I've ordered I've ordered <laughs> I've ordered so many pause buttons. I've worn so many of them out. And the thing is, it 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 it's a miracle uh, worker that pause button. So always remember, pause when agitated. Pause when confused. Pause when I'm about to blow up at somebody. Pause. 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 Yeah. Well, that's the trick is finding well, that pause for me. Well, 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 the thing is, like, I, I imagine if it's a it's road. It's an application. It's like a road where I'm driving the car and there's the brake, right? And I step on the brake. There are signs on the road that says, you know, how you see stop signs. And stuff. For me, the stop signs are, like, when I'm panicking, when I have any... Then it's a cue for me, ooh, I'm in my alcoholism, I have been, thank you so much, God, and that is an automatic thing, that thank you, God, is the break. Yeah. Right? See, but, for yeah. showing me, instead of going to my power, and then I'm like, acting based on self, then I'm, oh my God, I'm tight, and then I'm still, I, I squeeze mm -hmm. up to my head, mm -hmm. and that's when I'm like, okay, thank you so much for showing me my alcoholism, and then... When I'm ready, I then press on Man, the adapter and then go on. I I question about some of the age we question about. Mm, I um who those are the cues. Who passed, who passed stuff, when you feel like you're in dis ease, yeah. like she just described, her head's gonna blow the, off. The practical, yeah. the, literally, the stepping on the brake for me is thank you God. That's for the practical. The and you see, this yeah. is what we no, start it's paying thank attention you God for to. Me my disease. Am I in dis-ease right now? That's what I know. Am, am I irritable, restless, discontented? Am I fault-finding? And am I scared of something? Equals, I can feel it. Don't, don't you feel it when you're in any of those? Yeah. yeah. And, and then you go, oh, oh, Texas T says it. hit the pause button. Now what do I do? Well, then you turn your attention to your higher power. And say, I'm with the wrong power. Can you help me right now? Because I, I thank you for helping me see. I was about to blow up. You know, I'm not, as Issa says, my, my head's going to blow up, up <laughs> off my off my shoulders if, if I don't hit that pause button. And I'm going to act out. And, and then I always ask myself, which I've made it uh, uh, an application and, and have it, is that the woman I want to be? And the queen, the queen is so powerful because I can also take credit. Like I'm pressing the button now, and I'm still in my power. And that's why for me it's so useful to say thank you so much for showing me my disease. Yeah. I, I can't because I can't take over. It's so powerful. I'm really. It is my mind function. Exactly. We can't. We can't. We can't change. Yeah. We can't take it, anything. I can't. All I can do is become conscious. Uh, and by watching my thoughts and and, and, and see if I'm feeling uh, ease and comfort, because if I hit that pause button, I immediately feel ease and comfort because I know I'm in the safety zone because I'm back in the God zone. I'm not I'm not in in the power of me anymore, where I'm where I'm full of anxiety. This one girl uh, from Prime Time, what she was one of my uh, uh, my sober sisters. We had the same sponsor. But she, she calls anxiety attacks self-centered attacks. And, and I love that because, because it is. It, it's, and my, you know, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, an anxiety attack. She's like, no, you're having a self-centered attack. And I'm like, what? 
<laughs> yeah, no, of course that'll that'll piss off her ego. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but because it's just like if I'm having a self-centered attack, that that just means that I'm making everything about me, and I'm worried about what's gonna happen to me, what's gonna happen to me. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, my love. Yeah, I can't breathe, and it's just like pause. And breathe again. God has stopped me. God, can you help me through this? Uh, I, I'm. Can you show me what 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 is making me so anxious? What am I so afraid of? You know what what am I? Uh, my demands of others are, that are not being met. You know, it's just like I'm about to make a decision based on self, so I can get what I want. But you know, am I? And the thing is, when I make a decision based on self. I have to ask myself, all right, am I willing to pay the consequences? <laughs> you know, look, if I lie when I go for a job interview and I have, I don't have a clue how to do that job, but I lie and I get the job, am I willing to pay the consequences? Uh, did that happen to you? We just recently we had this step work. Oh, you know, yeah, step yeah. Work application. Yeah. On that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you don't have to pretend that your German is better than it is. Yeah, oh, she yeah. showed up. Exactly. So she's kicking oh, okay. ass. I, yeah. Yeah, that, and that's great. And it because, went well both yeah. interviews. So yeah. great. <laughs> So you yeah. like, oh, I lied. <laughs> so you, you didn't have to lie. You didn't yeah, have I didn't. to lie. I, I showed up and, and did your best. best I could. Yeah. And then you know what else happened? And like, just take HP with you, and then the interview turned to to English. <laughs> oh my goodness! Isn't that great? So yeah. God, God, God trans uh, translated. <laughs> In English, <laughs> everybody had to speak English. I uh, see. This is great, so and, this, yeah. this is, and this is how this program works. And I'm glad that you got coach yeah. her through that. I'm glad that she reached out. This is what I'm saying. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is why we need to call our sponsors when we get when we're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That took her a while, but fine now. <laughs> well, you know. But but what to do when you pressure the inner uh, queen? <laughs> self centered attack. Yeah. It takes us all a little time because yeah. we want to run the show. We don't want to be dependent on a sponsor. Queen. You know, I want to, in fact, I want my sponsor to give me gold stars because I didn't have to call her and, and, and ask her what to do. Yeah, I want the gold star. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you all got a gold star today for showing up, by the way. Did you have something to say, Daniel, before yeah, we move on? question because it's like, when you, what to do when you have this kind of personality where you self-destructively are looking to deal with the consequences? Mm. Can, can, you, can you repeat that? I mean, you're, you're Your Canary a Island. destructive personality. Oh, okay. And then you're you're willing to deal with the consequences. So you're, you know the consequences. Yeah, yeah, so that, that's called self-sabotage. Yeah. Well, these are things that you start noticing and you go, wow, if I do this, is it, and is that really what I want to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but my mind says yes. Well, if, if that's it, then you want to stay in your alcoholism and your ego. You didn't go to God and ask God to show you the facts. Mm-hmm. Show me the facts, though. God, is this really the person I want to be now that I've quit drinking? Is this really going to work as a sober member of Alcoholics Anonymous or a sober person on the planet? Mm-hmm. You know, well, these are the things that we catch. Look, I'm going to self-sabotage. Look at what I'm doing. To, look how I'm treating myself. You know, because that, that's what I, I, I like to remind people. It's not. It's not all about how we treat other people. We have. It's about how we treat ourselves. Also, mm-hmm. doing others is you would have them do under you. Uh, you know, and the thing is, okay, if and I, I don't know about you guys. Well, I probably do because we're all pretty much the same. But I treat myself worse. I say the meanest things to myself that I would never say to any. Not even my worst enemy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so mean to. So I mean, it's also like it takes what it takes. Like the question is like, how long do I want to go on with this? Like it's so exhausting reading yeah. the same script over and over again. Um, 
and being in self pity, or like it's this how free do I want to be? Yes, and, and that's, that's what's like. I mean, I can remain there for a while. It's like no one's gonna force me or anything. But I ask myself the question: How far do I want to go with this? It's still the yeah. same thing, and that's the insanity. And yeah, so it's admit like, insa- like, oh God, mm-hmm. I'm insane. So basically, you're just saying I- I'm with the wrong power. Exactly. <laughs> I'm with the wrong power. I'm with the wrong power. That's not who I want to be anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, and in the book, it also says, in Daniel, it says that we we love some of our defects. We love the drama that comes along with that self-sabotage. And the, and the thing is, that's our alcoholism and that's our ego because we want attention. We 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 love that drama. We get a fix out of that. Yeah. I, I said I said the wrong. I said that for the wrong. That I discover I so addicted to drama. Yes. I'm addicted to substance. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Drama is part of the play. Without the drama, that doesn't make this a fun. Well, you know, drama is a part of it. It's a part of. Of self destructing myself. Yeah. I've heard God's grace over drama. That helps me in my life. Can you repeat that? God's God's grace. Yeah, yeah. The good grace over drama. Grace over drama. Mm -hmm. That's G O D. Grace over. Because I'm just trying to get this on the recording. Mm -hmm. So make sure everybody knows what's going on behind the scenes here. Shall I continue reading, or any yes. more questions? I, I always like to get I always like to get off track, don't I? <laughs> but it's all AA related and, and application related. Uh, <clears throat> all right, where was I? I cannot remember. Oh, as he wills, so he will do this trait. Okay, wait a minute. Wait. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That we're gonna we're gonna be driving uh uh constant pressure driving the individual forward. It says in essence, underline, I am unstoppable. Until I'm stopped. Uh, the circle unconscious, which cannot be stopped. I cannot consciously stop it, but I can become aware of it, and and. Switch and realize that my my uh my attention is on the wrong power, so that that's how that's how self does get to start seeing self is I'm aware uh, of of this, uh so I'm aware that I'm going the wrong direction. The unconscious which cannot be stopped views life entirely from the angle of whether or not stopping is likely, imminent or not at all in the picture. When a stopping is likely, circle, there is worry and perhaps depression. Mm-hmm. Now you see I always use the depression card because I I was I you know, I was a uh, diagnosed with clinical depression, but as I tell my friend who was diagnosed with borderline that that uh this this program of alcohol synonymous uh, can can treat these other mental Diagnosis is maybe not a hundred percent, but but they they teach me a new way of thinking and a new way of life where I don't have to act out on these things. And I used to use my depression card all the time. It's just like, oh hey, no, I'm depressed. I can't show up because I'm depressed. Yeah, no. it's my alcoholism also that uses that as yes. an excuse. Oh yeah. Because and like, what yeah. I notice is that my symptoms of borderline personality disorder is so minimized now that I treat my alcoholism. Did you because hear that? Because when folks? I was in alcoholism, still even years of therapy, I was still using that as an excuse, as an exception, because I am different. You know, it, I exactly. got a fancy diagnosis. I can't help it that I act insane. Because I have this diagnosis, and, and the thing is, it's just like okay, well, let's put that in the old belief thing and see if, if we can practice the rest of steps on it. Like steps, let me open my mind and see if. But I remember sitting in front of my computer at home one day, and I was just like, I wonder what it would feel like if I was never depressed again. And uh, I felt all this weight lift off my shoulders and out of my body. 
So it was my thoughts that was giving me a lot of that heavy distress because, you know, that, that part of my ego, it's just like, I go, you can use the depression card, you know, on this one. And, and the thing is, what if I never felt depressed again? Have, do you have any little, uh, what if you, what if you never felt borderline again? Ask yourself that everybody asked, what if I never felt this again? Let's do that really quickly and see how you feel after you say, what if I never felt this way again? I don't know about you, but I just felt the whole weight fly off my shoulder. And I'm like, thank you, God, for giving me that experience. Because uh, th those are all my, those are my, like, go-to thoughts. Did you, get, did you get any relief when, you, when you asked yourself that? Yes. And also because I have collected experience of that where I treat alcoholism. Yes. And that my in my days, sometimes weeks, months, months, and it, it just is minimized and I stay there. But when I am in untreated alcoholism, it comes back. It's almost like an extra uh, superpower. And, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like a cloak. I don't know. It's like that. Oh, yeah, and, and, you know, the ego, it, it, it keeps it, well, you know what, suicide must be borderline, let's, let's use that card. It's a reason, but that never card. an ex I have alcoholism. Oh, I have alcoholism. Yeah. Well, that's the worst one. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is that we can't really go around because it's like, the drink is not there. It's like, I was drunk. But yeah. now that you're sober, like, what are you going to, like, that's why the steps are there. Yeah. It's like, uh. Yeah, I remember that because I, I when I first got because I was so used to say, oh I'm sorry I was drunk, and I remember when I was sober and I said, oh I'm, I did something that pissed somebody off. I'm sorry I was. There's no excuses anymore. And I went an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and I went that was the first time I ever got to see that that, that, that I'm I'm actually an asshole. It came out of your mouth and it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, it was, it was just shocking. It was just shocking to, to the girl that, that ego had told her that she was always innocent and nice and loving. And then I went, whoa. I can't use the I was drunk card anymore. I'm just an asshole. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we do have some work to do. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. You know when it's saying, like, when a stopping is likely, there is um, worry and perhaps depression. What is an example of the stopping? Um, I didn't get my way. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't get my way, I get depressed. Okay. If I don't get my way, I get anxious. Yeah. If I don't get my way, what does it say? I worry. I worry. Well, how can I get my way? I didn't get my way. Okay, now what am I going to do? And I start, you know, getting ready for Freddy. Well, how am I going to work this one? You know, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm start my manipulation uh, muscle going. <laughs> and, 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 if I, and if I feel like, oh, man, there's no way out, you know, I'm, I'm, and then I go into depression because oh, I don't see any solution to Her Majesty getting served. Yeah. And it, it applies to everything, everyone, Connected like team yeah. with, sponsor, yeah. if there's something I expect text that she would say to me, I get into, like, oh, she doesn't like me. <laughs> or when a sponsee would not, you know, like not uh, the way I expect them to behave, that's when I'm in trouble. <laughs> It doesn't choose. That's the thing. It doesn't choose just because you guys are sponsors or Texas is a sponsor. It's not an exception. I've got alcoholism, but yeah. I can be aware of it. And the great thing is, you know, even those little subtle ways how we run, we try to run the show, which is, which is having expectations of how Issa is going to respond to me on certain things, and she doesn't give me the response I want. Yeah, there was when, one when way. baby goes. <laughs> There was one situation, right? Like that wasn't like uh, I think uh, we were texting and then. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Something uh -huh. like it was recently. Like and then text was like, I'm sorry, it, it, something like didn't expect. I didn't say what you expected. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, like, I can. I can see. Was just to bring awareness to this. It wasn't for mm -hmm. us to fight. Was was for me to say, oh, you're right. Like yeah. things for showing. Okay. But you express with each other, you know that. Oh yeah, we talk. I mean, there is we, a conflict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about it. 
We talk about the conflict, but in a certain way. In a mature way. Yeah. So if something can be like, my boyfriend isn't behaving how I want him to behave. That's Being stopped? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's why I was already laughing. Yeah. Because yeah. if he's not behaving the way you want him to behave, is he not going to make your resentment rest immediately? Hmm. Off of his head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Ego, ego, ego. Ego, ego, ego. How are y'all doing over there in Holla? All good in Holla? Good, good, good. Let's keep reading then. <laughs> yes. What? Yes. What? Yes, yeah. Okay, because we just earlier just I I I thought that you didn't hear us just say that Oh. Oh, did you have something to say? I I we didn't hear you. Just, just like one comment, nothing important, but we were. I was just. Save your face or save your ass. Well, now we can now we can hear you. So um, it, it says the next. Uh, so it says when it seems imminent, which I circled that and I wrote the the uh, that means uh, threatened. So so when it my stopping when a stopping is, is threatened, when I'm threatened with a stopping is what that says there. And I circled, is anxiety bordering on panic? Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. Yeah, because I'm running the show with a with an <laughs> eye, ruin, uh, underline. And when the threat is removed, there is relief and gaiety, happiness. Woo-hoo, I got my way. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. Ha, ha, ha. I'm the queen. Health is equated with a feeling of buoyancy and smooth sailing ahead. A sense of, I feel wonderful. Sickness, contrary wise, means lack of vim, vigor, and vitality. Uh, and is burdened with a sense of circle. I'm not getting anywhere. Mm. You see how, you see how our thoughts can actually bring on sickness? Because if I'm if I'm going to go down into I'm not getting anywhere, you know, I suddenly am in self pity, and, and my whole my whole body is is accommodating my thought life. Oh, I better just break down because she's a, you know right now she thinks she's a loser. Let's 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 appease her and get sick. And, but but sometimes and I have to tell you this, sometimes when I get sick. It's because I'm not listening to God and doing what God wants me to do, and God needs me to have a super pause because um, I, he, uh, he's directing me to do things, but I'm really saying, okay, I'll get to that later, God, and I'm not doing it. And, and so God will make me sick for a few days so that I, because God needs to, me to slow down completely. I'm going to slow you down. I never get drastically sick. But boy, I tell you what, every once in a while. So, and, and when I get sick, my mind used to tell me uh, a lot of things. It gets very negative and tells me, you know, I go back into full-blown alcoholism. My mind starts fault-finding and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm never going to succeed. I'm a loser, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, you know, when, when I'm sick and, and nobody loves me. Nobody's called me because I'm sick to see if I'm okay and, and stuff like this. My mind will attack me. And the good thing about that is I observe it and I go, ah. Oh. So every time I get sick, when my mind starts in on me, I go, ah, oh, it's because I'm sick. And I accept it. And then my mind shuts up because it knows I'm not going to fall for it and go go down that rabbit hole. I think somebody just called that a rat hole. I'm not going to go down the rat hole. <laughs> but, you know, these are things we watch for, and that's why I observe my thoughts. Because I can observe my thoughts with a higher power without getting dramatic or reactionary. I can just observe it and go, huh, so that's what happens when I'm sick. My, my alcoholic thinking is full, it's just supercharged. Oh, well, no wonder I'm sick, you know, and, and, but it, it's really great because there's a silver lining in everything. If you watch what your mind's telling you when you're sick, you'll get a lot out of it, and you go to your higher power, can you help me right here? Because if I'm going to be sick, I'd rather, I'd rather 
say, okay, God, my mind is telling me all this, but I, I'm sick. Can you just, you know, like, like if, I, if I'm in bed sleeping, I'm like, can you just wrap your arms around me and just, just lay here with me and, and protect me while I'm sick and, and just be here and bring me that ease and comfort? That, that any sick person would want, because I can't, feel, I cannot uh, count on human people to come and comfort me when I'm sick. But I, I tell you, we all turn into queen bed when we're sick, and we all need ease and comfort when we're sick. If no, if no human power can do it, I know a power that can. I ask my higher power, and believe me, it works. Trust me, you, everything I'm telling you is from experience. I don't make this stuff up. It was, uh, I learned all this stuff out of the big book in the 12 and 12, and this is just my way of approaching things. I'm like Ron D. Uh, if, 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 if this approach doesn't work for you, find another approach, but, but this is all out of the application of the steps. <laughs> so, um, where, where were we? Okay. The need to get, oh, underline, the need to get somewhere or to be on the go and the consequent uh, circle suffering from eternal restlessness, underline, is still another direct effect of an inner ability to be stopped or expressed otherwise to accept the fact that one is, circle the word, limited. Uh, the ego doesn't like that word. Underline, the king not only cannot accept the normal frustrations of life, but because of his inordinate driving ahead, wanting my way, is constantly creating unnecessary roadblocks by virtue of his own insistence of barging ahead, thus causing added trouble for himself. Yeah, right? Pushing and shoving. Texas, can you explain this paragraph? This uh, line. That, that. Well, go ahead and read it to me. Uh, because of his inordinate driving ahead, he's constantly creating unnecessary roadblocks by virtue of his own system or guarding ahead, thus causing added trouble for himself. So that means I'm just building walls. Well, yeah, it means you're pushing and shoving, and, and, and the thing is, <clears throat> basically, uh, my, my unnecessary roadblocks it, it, is like, it's like uh, I'm constantly creating unnecessary roadblocks by making demands on others, and, and usually that, that's causing a little, bit, a, a little bit of trouble because nobody likes demands. Like, like it, it took me forever, uh, uh, for a long, uh, forever's a long time. It took me a long time to that one. Uh, I think it's in the in the twelve and twelve where it says uh, anybody can see the difference between demands and a simple request. And I'm like, well, I can't see that. And the thing, the thing is, it's just like because I thought. Every time I demanded something, I actually thought I was making a simple request. But I didn't realize that that was the queen wanting her way and that I was going to, I was, if they said no or didn't want to do it my way, I was going to have a problem with that. Can you tell me more or ask, tell, tell us more about the difference between a demand and a request? Oh, you have a problem with that too. Well, well, the thing is, it's like if I make a simple request, I'm doing it with no expectations. They can they can actually say yes or no, and I can accept that. So I I'm I'm accepting that I may get a no for an answer. Now a no to somebody who's on untreated alcoholism that that is being stopped. Mm -hmm. If you tell me no, you know, don't stop me. And, and the thing is, I'm either gonna trying to manipulate you or you're going to make my resentment less because you didn't give me my way or I'm going to try to work you to get my way and, and, and the more I try to work you, the more, the more you kind of step back and if I keep working that person, they're eventually going to say, you know what, i got to get going. 
Yeah, because they're going to, and inside they're going to be saying, you know what? I'm so glad I had this phone call with this person because I definitely don't want to work with them. <laughs> because, because they see my character and they see that I'm a demanding character and they don't want to work with a demanding character. Now, if I was making simple requests and I said, you know what? I noticed that this, this opportunity was here. What do you think if I take this opportunity? And here's a couple ideas I have uh, if I do take that opportunity. See, that's a mature conversation, but I have to ask God to help me do that because that's a simple request. And if that person goes, you know what, that's not going to work for me. Because I'm, with, I'm God's in there with the conversation with me. I'm like, okay. And I, and I go, well, can you, t I, I can maturely say, well, can you tell me why? You, you don't think that'll work for, for me or for us to work together on that. And then they might tell me this and I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't think of, I didn't think about that. Huh. Well, how about if we do this? You see how I can continue the conversation? Because I didn't get mad because they said no. Like a little baby. Am I immature? That, that, that shows I'm immature because I'm like, oh, fine. Okay. Goodbye. You know what I'm saying? Or I push and shove and go, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. And they're like, uh, I gotta get going. That's a demand where I, where I keep pushing and shoving. A simple request is, is if they say no, I go, okay, well, can you tell me why you, you don't like that idea? That's a mature conversation. And my conversation with that person will continue. Because then they'll tell me, and then I go, well, how about this idea? And then, and because because I'm working with them on a just, you know, I, I'm, I'm just making a simple request, they'll continue talking with me. And they go, well, I don't really like that idea either, but how about this one? And and I'm like, whoa, that's, that, that idea is better than any idea I've had. This is fucking Great. I'm so glad that I wasn't demanding and I didn't turn into a queen baby because now we're having a mature conversation and what they just came up for us to work together is a great idea and I'm a hundred percent behind it and I'm so glad that I know the difference between a simple request and a demand now. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on how we present. I mean, where, where you, because there is a lot of people in my, in my, in in my life, still in my culture, where a request, simple, a simple request, for them was interpreted as a demand. Well, it, it was probably was a demand already by my side. Yeah. Expressed <laughs> in a really nice way. <laughs> and nice guy. Well, that, that, but, that, that, but, that, they, that. but they took it as a demand. That's because, that's because, uh, we as alcoholics, we think that we're being nice, but we're really being manipulative. Yeah. That's why I need God to help me communicate. If I want the power of me, man, I'm gonna work you. Yeah, I'm always gonna work you because I want what I, uh, didn't you want what you wanted? You want your way. That's king baby. Queen baby. In your, yeah, you're a queen. Queen baby. <laughs> So, so the thing is, I don't let I, I ask God to help me communicate because Queen Baby is gonna make demands, and if I don't get my way, I'm gonna turn into that baby, and and I'm gonna get a resentment. Oh, they said no. You see, Queen Baby can't stand the word no, and then I'm like, okay, fine. You know what I'm saying? And then the other person is just like, whoa. So you already had it in your mind I was going to say yes, and now you're mad at me because I said no? Well, and so I, that, it feels like you're trying to control me here a little bit. You know, where if I, just, if I make a simple request and they, and they uh, say no, I can say, well, can we talk about it? Why did, why did you say no? And Because I want to find out in a mature fashion. I wonder why they said no. And then they can tell me why they said no, and then we can have a mature 
conversation about it as long as God's with me. Because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get upset. My ego's not gonna get hurt. Because my ego is not involved. And, and, and I find that, uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I was always scared to have conversations, mature conversations with people. Because number one, I didn't trust myself not to get angry. Uh, number two, I didn't trust myself, uh, if I didn't get my way, I definitely was gonna get angry. And number three, I don't want to hurt the feelings. Four, I hate confrontation. What, what if, if I have to tell somebody I need you to move out, you're, I, I don't want you as my roommate anymore. And they may ask why. And then I have to ask God to help me tell them why. It's just not working out for me. I don't have to go, you know, my ego would want to go in and start, you know, spelling it out. Well, you, you know, you poop on the toilet ed edge, you know, or whatever it is. Uh, you know, the, your, the food you cook is stinky. I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm just going to say, I, I ask God to help me say, it's just not working out for me anymore. I don't have to crucify people any longer. I can ask God to help me be loving, kind, and uh, mature in my conversations when I have to have a hard uh, discussion with somebody. Because now, I, now, I, now God, you can see on my own power, I don't know how to do any of that. Because I'm going to have a confrontation. I'm going to get angry. I'm going to get, you know, because that's, that's the power of me. That's the character I built. If I build a new character with God, I need to ask God to help me build that character, especially how to communicate. Because see, the way my higher power communicates me, to me, is a loving, kind, and mature. It's interesting what's on this one is that to accept the fact that one is limited, like the finite self. That's and correct. yet the function of this like the uh, queen baby is there and it just you know, what it's written here also is like wanting my way, the way I expect the world should be done <clears throat> and then before I know it I'm controlling. And it's like Well, that's just it. If we're limited. Yeah. That means we are not God. Yeah, and we are not God. We and we try to play God, but we don't do a very good job mm -hmm. because we don't we don't have the tools. That's why I have to ask God, can you help me learn those tools? And that's when you build a new character. You're asking God, can I use your tools? Because my tools don't work. The survival. And that's that's why they say that we don't we don't go back to our old old you know. We go back to old characters, and it's not really ever old. It's always there, and then when it crops up, I get to go to turn to God. So we never stop going to, you know, I always say the character I brought in, uh, that wasn't on a spiritual basis. It was on a queen baby basis. And, and, and the thing is, I, I want, uh, that's why I, I, I pay attention, and you see, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm pretty good at it. Where I'm like, I, I'm not with God. Uh, God, can you show me? I don't know how to talk to people without sounding demanding. Can you help me? Because the way you talk to me is so loving and kind. And and, and, and it, it, it feels like a simple request. But every time you talk to me, it sounds like a good idea. And, and I listen. And, and that was a good thing to, to realize the more I got to know my higher power. That when I use that demanding or the manipulating, I'm so nice about it, you know, people can see through that crap. I'm a used, I'm a used car salesman. You know, I mean, I mean, but they can see through it. They're like, okay, he's working me. I wonder what he's got up his sleeve. You know, and the thing is, that, that's the character I brought in. That, that was the only way I knew how to function. Now I need to build a new character and ask God, to teach me how to function in a loving, kind, mature way. And, and, and it takes practice, but, you know, I can see the difference so, so fast now, and I can go, okay, God, what do I need to do? You know, I'm always, I'm like, I'm always on the sideline. What, what do I need to do here? Can you show me what I need to do here? Because I tell you what, God's going to tell me, give me a, a good way to communicate with people. And I don't, I don't make them mad anymore. And if they get mad, I can go. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't give you 
the response you expected. Because if they got mad, it's because I didn't give them the response they expected. And you know how I know that? Because that's how I used to be. I would get mad because they didn't give me, they didn't say yes, they said no. They didn't give me the response I expected. So I didn't get, you know. So, and who is it? Me or you, if I, if I tell you, no, we can't do that. Would it be better for you to get mad at me? Or maybe ask, hmm, why can't we do that? Because then I'm just curious. What are your thoughts on what I wanted from you? It's a mature way to do things, but I didn't do this on my own power. God, God help me with this. Uh, I don't know. Isa, can you hear me? Of course you can. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're, uh, so, so let's move on. Of course, on some occasions, the king gets stopped. Just like Daniel's boyfriend, uh, said no and stopped totally. <laughs> Illness, arrest, sometimes the rules and regulations of life will halt him. Then he marks time, complies if need be, until he makes his next demand, uh, circle, waiting for the return of freedom, so I can make my next demand, which he celebrates in the time-honored fashion if he's an alcoholic, he gets drunk, initiating a phase, where there is no stopping him. <laughs> the immaturity of such a person is readily evident. Well, we can't see it in ourselves, but boy, we can see it in everybody else. Mm-hmm. But but the thing is, now that we know what we're looking for, we can start observing our thoughts and our actions and see it in ourselves and go, whoa. And if you can't see it, just call your sponsor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He, okay, underline, he is, circle, impatient of delay. My doctor's appointment was at 2, and now it's 2.30. How dare them make the queen wait? Why do they even, and here's my self-talk, why do they even make appointments if they're going to make me wait? You know, what a bunch of assholes, because they set it up that way, didn't they? They, they? they set it up that way so they can laugh at all of us because they're making us wait. And then by the time they call me in, I'm like really irritable, restless, and discontented, and, and I'm not very, oh, let me take your blood pressure, fine. <laughs> you know what, I could have taken that while I was in the waiting room. I could have done all this myself if you just <laughs> give me the equipment, because I had nothing else to do because I was waiting. <laughs> Swing, baby. Mm-hmm. Instead of going like, you know what? <sighs> Accepting, yeah, usually yeah, you have to wait. And you have the queen babies playing for a workshop, and then it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you know, while you're sitting there waiting, instead of instead of dealing with the self-talk to queen babies, you hit the pause button. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm impatient. Push that pause button. God, thanks for showing me how impatient I am. And yes, I do get annoyed when I have to wait in the doctor's office. But let me apply that story to prayer. Accept the things I cannot change. Okay, great. So this is another opportunity for me to practice application of patience. Thank you, God, for helping me be able to sit here. And I might start getting impatient again. Oh, and I'm like, okay, God, I'm getting impatient again. Help me to sit quietly and, and be with you and, and realize that that that. I, this is something I cannot change. You just accept this. So, uh, where, where am I? The impatience of delay. Okay. Can never, and I circled, never let matters evolve. Nope. I have to push it up. I have to know what's going to happen now. He must have a blueprint to follow. Outline it clearly, a path. Underlies through a jungle, the jungle of life. The wisdom of, of the ages is merely shackling tradition, which should make way for the freshness, the insouciance of youth. And I circled insouciance because I had no idea what that meant. I looked it up, and it means the carelessness of youth. Yeah, I miss those days. 
the value of staying where one is and working out one's destiny in the here and now is not suspected. Circle the 24-hour principle would be confining for one whose inner life brooks no confinement. The unstoppable person seeks circle life, circle fun, circle adventure, circle excitement, and discover he is on a perpetual whirly gig which carries him continuously ahead, but of course in a circle. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. We're Hi, gonna... Elena. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yes, like I'm moving and I'm living already in the future and all the bad yeah. things that could happen in the future. Uh huh. Is that are you com are are you comfortable? No. <laughs> <laughs> no? So the value of staying where one is and working out one's destiny in the here and now is not suspected. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so so it's keeping everything in the day. In the day we're in. It's just like, I don't know what the future will bring. I can make a loose plan, but my expectations of things going my way all the time, I need to put a stop to that. Uh, because, uh, and, and that's what, you know, that's what I love about the higher power is, is it, uh, instead of being in fear a lot of times, because when I travel, I get in a lot of fear. Is the plane going to be late? Am I going to be late? And, and it's, you know, it's just gonna, ha when, when I land, am I gonna have all the paperwork? And, and uh, you know, I start, and instead of being in fear, I go, wow, look at this adventure God has me on. I just wanted to put this, because Helena, you were asking about, um, you know, the example or to explain that further with constantly creating unnecessary roadblocks <laughs> by virtue of his own res uh, insistence on barging ahead, if you if that's familiar, thus causing <laughs> added trouble for himself. Just with your situation, I love you. So you <laughs> so you just wanted to, to reiterate <laughs> that maybe she needs to to, to meditate on uh, on those sentences and apply it and see if if maybe she has those tendencies. Yeah, no, oh, because okay. she because she was asking that too, and then you know just to relate it to her, what's relevant in her life. Okay, and and you know what I like about all this is that we can talk about this stuff, and if anybody's ego is getting stung, we can see that it's our ego, and then we can go, you know what, I need to hear that because I need to see my ego. I need to see what am I doing that's causing me trouble. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for showing more me. More about my ego. Yeah. Thank you, God, for showing me. Because on my own power, I am queen baby. I take everything personally. Um, <clears throat> I can be mean to you, but you cannot be mean to me. There, there we have it. It's, that's our one-way street again. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Rules do not apply to me. Yeah, the rules do not... You the them. rules do not apply to me, but I'm very sensitive. I need you to see this and, and to treat me... With kid gloves, even though I don't give a shit how you feel. <laughs> you know, pay attention to what, what your thoughts are, because I tell you what, I was shocked. I'm like, oh my God, there's a monster that lives inside of me. You know, because all I ever saw consciously was this sweet, loving, kind girl, which, which you know, I, I, I finally found out that, that all I saw was a victim of this mean world and the martyrdom, because I'm so sweet, and I, I, I fix all this, you know, I'm, a, I'm the people pleaser, I'm the, I'm, I'm the codependent, I fix all this stuff to make everybody else's life comfortable, and I get nothing, more. and then they just, and then they go, bye-bye, and, you know, and, and because, because I need them to fix me now, but they leave, because I fix them, they're good now, and that's called martyrdom. So, so I'm either the victim or I'm the martyr. And I start seeing this and I go, whoa, I'm a lot sicker than I thought. You know, my, 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 my thought life is a lot. I'm going to really have to start looking at this and seeing this that I shouldn't do anything for anybody unless I want to. 
Because that's if if I do anything for anybody and I expect anything in return, I'm a self seeker. And I'm like, oh my god, I didn't realize I'm a self seeker in, in, in all this stuff because I always want something out of the deal. Serve me. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that's putting it in a nutshell. Um, Oh, the little shit. Yeah, couple of those have been. Good work. Uh, which one oh, were at? So we just did the whirly gig, which carries some. Ah, oh, the, 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 the whirly gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, underline the unstoppable person has not time for growth. Of course not. Yeah. I don't have time to slow down. Uh oh. How dare you? Yeah, I'm, I'm perfect. You see, because the monarch thinks that the queen baby thinks so perfect, and everyone should revolve around them. Uh, underline, he must always inward, inwardly feel immature. Yeah. This, then, is how the carryover of infantile traits affects the adult so encumbered. He or she is a uh, circle possessed by the inner king or queen who not only must do things in a hurry, but have no capacity for taking frustration and strife. Underline he seeks, and I, I circled that word seeks because we see that a lot in our in our uh in our uh what's the literature? Seeking, we seek. So he seeks underline a life which will not stop him and finds himself in a ceaseless rat race, and I'm going to also add, and very much alone. <laughs> Why doesn't anybody want to be around me? Well, because you always demanding, <laughs> and, 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 and then, of course, I don't want to be around anybody because they're not giving me my way. So it's a very lonely, uh, the ego separates us from, from God and, and our fellows. Because we want our way, and if everybody on the planet, which, which everybody on the planet wants their own way, but it, it's how we deal with it. Am I going to deal with it in an immature way or an immature way? Am I going to ask God to help me how, how to see this, show me the facts, and show me how to communicate about this? Or am I going to let Queen Baby get in there and, and uh, you know, that, that, that's where I get in trouble. All this is part and parcel of the big ego. Uh, underline, the individual has no choice. He cannot select one characteristic and hang on to that, shedding other more obviously circle undesirable traits. Circle, it is all or nothing. This is what Tebow is saying, it's all or nothing. I can't, you know, that's why in step six and seven, I ask God to take all of me, good and bad, it's all or nothing. Take, help me get rid of all of these things that are standing in the way of me being useful to you and, and, and my fellows. You being God. God and my fellows. And, and that's what it's saying right here. That it's all or nothing. That's why in step ten, we watch for these things to crop up. So we can uh, ask God to remove them in that moment. Because I can only ask God to remove a character defect or a fear in the moment I'm in. And that's why we have that step 10. Because I had no idea how I apply step 7. I thought, you know, okay, and, and, and how come I still have these character defects if I gave them to God in step 7? But then I learned... Ah, oh, that's going to be a forever, this is going to be a, a forever application, and step 10 supplies me that application and makes it very simple. I watch my mind, and when I see these things, selfishness, self-centeredness, self-seeking, judgment, you know, any character defect or any fear crop up, which, you know, it says I, I ask God to remove it, which means hit the pause button, I, I, I'm seeing these cross up. Uh-oh, wrong power. 
hit the pause button, ask God to remove it in the moment I'm in. And if it's a character defect, I always ask God, what's my fear underneath this? Because in the steps 7 and 12 and 12, it tells me how fear uh, sets off all my character defects. And, and as Chuck C says, Chuck Chamberlain says, that my, my, my uh, character defects are, are the children of my ego. So it's my ego. Yeah, and my, so fear sets off these character defects because, because I'm immature and I have the characteristic of a baby. So, so the thing is, fear, the fear of somebody telling me no, after I made that demand, this is, a, that's, this is me and untreated alcoholism, acting like an alcoholic. Okay, okay, I'm going to work this person. I'm going to call up like a used car salesman and, and sell them on why they should do this for me. And then they say no. Am I going to react? From the queen baby, that's when I really have to watch because one of my my fear of not getting my way is gonna set off a defect. So I'm either gonna be in self pity or I'm gonna be in anger. Those are my two go tos. I can't believe you said no. You really hurt my feelings. It's just like get over it, you fucking little whining piece of shit. Sorry, I'm touching on this, but but. Every once in a while, I do have a little trashy sailor mouse. Um, but but anyway, y'all get you, you get the picture on that about how my ego works and how how why I need that fucking big pause button because the thing is, oh, there's another character defect. I don't want to react with that anymore. I wonder what God's got for me. God, how would you have me uh, communicate in this situation? And at first. If I get to hit that pause button and, and, and I don't lose my temper or react from an egoic uh, place, if I only get, because when I first started practicing this, I only got that far, was hitting the pause button and, and I couldn't say anything because I was still like learning how to not react with anger. And then I got, and then I started beating myself up. But see, that's why I love the nightly review because at night I went, I went, you know what, God? I'm finding that you're really helping me uh, when I hit that pause button to, to remove my anger in that moment and showing me the fear underneath it. But I need to learn how to communicate in a loving, kind, mature way if I need to say something. Because I'm starting to feel like a, I always call it a, throw, a doormat. There we go. I'm feeling like a doormat. Because now I can't even say what, what, what respond to these things. Because I don't know how to respond in any other way than being angry. Can you teach me, can you help me build a new character that, that knows how to respond in a mature, loving, kind way? And and you see, that's what I do in my nightly review. Because I'm like, okay, God, I, I did it again. I, you helped me remove that. I didn't respond with my anger. But there's that question in the nightly review that says, what could I have done instead? That's why I ask God to help me do my nightly review. I don't do any, after step three, I, I ask God to help me do all these steps. I'm, I'm no longer working on my own power. I have a new manager. I have to out, bring my manager into all these steps, into every moment of every step. So, so that's why in the nightly review, I'm, 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 I'm like, okay, God. And, and, and I've just, uh, was talking to a sponsor sponsor the other day, and, and I've added to my nightly review, uh, have I violated any of the five C's? I'll get to those in a moment. Uh, because because the thing is, if, if, if I'm getting frustrated with myself and I don't want to be a doormat, I need to learn how to communicate in a loving kind, in a spiritual way. So so I in my nightly review, I'm like, God, what can I have done instead? Without anger, with you, you know, with your power. And, and God would go, well, you could have asked them, oh, okay, well, can you tell me why you said no? Because maybe we can come up with a different idea. You see, that that's being mature and, and it's telling the person, okay, well, if you, can, if you can guide me through why you said no, maybe we can come up with a different idea to work together. And that's mature because then you're working together with these people. I haven't scared them off or put up a wall with my anger. So, so, so I'm just telling you the progress of it is 
The first, the first part of our episode is being able to hit that pause button and not react in anger or self pity or whatever it is, arrogance. And if that's the story you get, then eventually you're not in your nightly review. You say, okay, I, I'm getting pretty good at the pause button, but now I feel like a doormat. What can you help me start? What could I have done instead to respond? How do you, how do you, how would you have me respond? Teach me, teach me, teach me. Every day I ask God, can you make me more like you? Because that's, that's his, my best teacher. Now, I'm going to tell you about the five C's uh, that I've added to my nightly review because uh, it, it, it's good to, the five C's are, and y'all might need to help me out. Criticism, comparing, controlling, complaining, complaining, complaining and competing. Can you repeat those again, somebody? Comparing, criticizing, complaining, competing, controlling. Yes. So, so that, that's a good, that's a good uh, nightly review check, you know, to ask myself, did I violate any of the five C's? And and uh, the thing is, I I bust myself on that all the time because uh, I go, yep, yep, I violated that that one, and about, because. If you're really honest with yourself and with God, generally most people violate all of them in in a day, and it's just good good to look at that and go, okay, there we go, because all of those all of those five C's are all character defects. Was I living in my character defects of the five C's today? Well, yes, I was. Huh? Thank you for showing me this, God, because it, because. That really, that really gives me a super focus on what I need to work on. And but, that is also the superior and inferior thing, you know. Like. Absolutely. That, that's ego. Ego, 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 ego. 5C, children of ego. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, fear of not being good enough. Fear of, of, of you know. And, and it's just like, I tell you what, you know, it, the five C's, I can always see all of my character traits. I want to be the center of the universe. I'm easily frustrated. And I, don't stop me. I'm in a hurry. Yeah, I'm in a it's hurry. It's all about me. Yeah, it's all about me. I'm not getting what yeah. I'm criticizing is like. Yep, yep, yep. I'm better than you. Criticizing better than you. Competing better than you. Or I want to be better than you. I feel I feel like, you know, I, I have to show you something. Uh, yeah, whatever. But, you know, you, you, to each his own, but these are like little words that, that it's really good to think about because if we really just put in, and, and, and all of this, this stuff that we think about, it doesn't really take that long if you just do a little bit, bit every day. Mm -hmm. If you think about what, do I compete? Hmm. You know, maybe do a little writing. Do I compete? You know, and ask yourself this. And God can you help me notice when I compete. Uh, you know, and, and you do this with all the five C's. It, it gives you it gives you an application of of how to pay attention to where you want to go. Because I don't want to compete. I don't want to complain. I don't want to control. But but the thing is, on my own power, and this is you know that's 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 my default setting. The five C's default setting, and, and that's why I really have to work close with God on that. Help me help me uh, become more aware. Of when I'm violating the five C's. So anyway, I got off track again. So let's get back on track. Oh, it's all or nothing, I believe. Uh, 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 underline, for example, the driving person usually has plenty of energy, sparkle, and vivacity. Uh, it, uh, underline the rest of this paragraph. <laughs> He stands out as a most attractive human being. Clinging to that quality, however, merely ensures the continuance of excessive drive and the big ego. With all the pains attendant upon a life based on those qualities, the sacrifice, let's circle the word sacrifice, of the uh, and, and I circled ego elements must be total. This is this is Tebow talking, or they will soon regain regain their ascendancy. So um, 
you know, that step seven prayer is just like, what I'm asking you to be removed is, is my ego element. Can you please remove my ego element? And, and so, because uh, they're hurting me. That, that's my character defects and my feelings and all of that stuff. Uh, but but that, that it, it, he said it must be total. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and just say this and how it must be total because he keeps talking about this. And I, and I thought, this is so impossible. How can this be total? And I, I have to go back. Well, that's where step 10 comes in. Because I watch and, and I ask God to remove it. And then my ego turns from the big ego, the capital E ego, to the little E ego. You see, because the little E ego, because we can't ever get rid of our ego completely. What we need to do is keep an eye on the capital E big ego. Because the little e ego is, is is the healthy right sized ego, you know it's it's they're just a, just a, it's a good self esteem thing there, but that's just the 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 lowercase e ego, uppercase e ego, characteristic of the infancy you know the the immaturity of the infancy of a child. So, so this is what what we're talking about here because everybody gets confused because it's like you can't completely get rid of ego, no, but you can take it from the upper case to the lower case. You can smash it into the small case. Yes, when when you turn to God and ask for God's help, and, and that's step ten all day long, all day long. You know, I watch for these things and then I say, God, can you turn this big ego into my little ego? Because because my little ego is cozy in the in the in the God zone, feeling right size. You know, it's there to help me be of service to others and 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 be with God. It's it's a spiritual. The little ego is a spiritual ego because it doesn't need to be a capital E because the big ego wants to show off and 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 be the the, the clean. and 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 it wants to be the big. I'm the big ego. It's like, well, so what? I like the little ego. The little ego is soft and gentle and loving and caring. It, it, it's the God ego. So anyway, I hope that's all making sense to you. Okay. We, uh, okay. Learning to live. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> now, does anybody need a break? We've been, uh, I don't know how long we've been doing this. Let's go for a little break. A little break, yeah. Okay, we've been an hour and 17 minutes. Okay, pause. All right, we're going to continue after our break. I, I, I've given you a lot of great nuggets and explanations on this thing, so I'm going to, I'm going to do my best because I'd like to finish this up today. And um, I'm going to read on and everything, but I'm, I'm totally open for questions, and, and I'll try not to repeat the nuggets I've already expressed. Mm -hmm. Learning to live. Those of you, anyway, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Those who view the prospect of life underlying without abundant drive as unutterably dull and boring should examine the life of members of Alcoholics Anonymous who have truly adopted the AA program. In other words, they're living it. They're not just uh, okay. I did the I did the steps. I should be well. No, they apply it all to their life on a daily basis to treat their alcoholism. They will see people underlined who have been stopped. If you go to AA, because we've all been stopped, and who therefore do not have to go anywhere, but people who are. Underline learning for the first time in their lives circle to live. Mm -hmm. They are ne neither dull nor wishy-washy. Quite contrary, they are alive and interested in the realities about them. They see things, uh, I circled, in the large. I circled are tolerant. I circled open-minded. I circled, not close-minded, uh, bullying ahead. They are receptive to the wonders in the world about them. 
and, and instead of finding fault with everything, I'm like, wow. I never realized how nice it was to have hot and cold running water. That's one of the wonders of the world for me. <laughs> Indoor plumbing. Wow. Magical. Um, including the presence of a deity. And I circle deity because that's another word for God. Underline who makes all this possible. So it's, it's finally he's, he's, he's dropping the G word about a deity, about, about that, that uh, I was mistaken uh, as the characteristics of a child that I was godlike because I, I, I'm sick without uh, a different power running my life. My, my new deity, uh, and who makes all this possible, this ease and comfort. And at Circle, they are the ones who are really living, the people who are applying this and living with a higher power and building new character and a spiritual life. The, the attainment of such a way of life is no mean accomplishment. Preliminary to this discussion, the conclusion was offered that the big ego was a residual of the initial feeling life of the infant, it should be evident that the, and let's underline, immaturity characteristically found in the circle makeup of the alcoholic is a persistence of the original state of the child. Guilty. It's exactly who I am because I, I brought my characteristics into my adulthood and that's what I act on. In connection with the description of the manifestations which denote a large and active big ego, it should be recalled that the presence in the uh, underlying unconscious of such a big ego forces may be quite out of reach of circle conscious observation. I'm going to read that again. Uh, the, uh, uh, the description of the manifestation was to a large and active big ego. It should be recalled that the presence in the unconscious of such a big ego forces may be quite out of reach of conscious observation. But now that we know what we're looking for, we can become conscious of our thoughts and our feelings and our character defects cropping up, and our fears, we can become conscious of our dis-ease. And uh, that, that, that's the good news. And then, and then we can apply the step 10. We can ask God to remove these in the moment. I mean, ooh, I'm with the wrong power. Let me get over to the, to the God's own power. Preliminary to this discussion, the conclusion was offered that the big ego was a residual, uh, uh, did I read that? Yes, yeah. I did. Where am I? Show no. me, show me, show me. Oh, only through, let's, let's, let's go ahead and circle that, that whole sentence. The last sentence, only, and thank you very much. Only through the acting and feeling of the individual can their existence be suspected. And that's what I was saying, the acting and the feeling and, 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 and the thoughts. Uh, then, I can, then I can suspect it. <laughs> now the answer to the first question raised herein, namely, underline what part of the alcoholic must, circle must, Underline surrender is obvious. Circle. It is the ego element. That is what I have to keep. I have to surrender that every day to God. I surrender my alpha and my mind. You know, that, that, that's, that, that's a step three on my thoughts and my actions. I surrender my thoughts and my actions to you every day, God, uh, because I can no longer run the show. I, I, I prove that to myself by, by seeing how my, the power of me runs the show. 
a little low power. And it's just so good to define that too. It's the inability to accept frustration. I'm always in a hurry. And that's exactly what we need to surrender. Because we keep hearing in meetings, you need to surrender. And that, that really made me aggressive at the beginning because I'm like, how am I supposed to surrender? And exactly. knowing these things and reading them and how they function in my yes. life in the day I'm in uh-huh. is exactly what I yeah. want to surrender. Exactly. And, and I had that, you know, because I, I used to tell you how, how my, my friend Louisiana, Louisiana Larry in the primetime meetings used to tell me, stay down, Ted, yeah. stay down. And I didn't get it. What he meant is surrender. What, and what Isha just said, well, what do I surrender? Old ideas, old character, always mm-hmm. in a hurry, the inability to accept frustration, me playing mm-hmm. God, mm-hmm. all that. self seeking uh, yeah, all of it. Dishonesty, mm-hmm. all my character defects, I need to surrender them on, on, a, on a daily basis all through the day. But that's where step 10 comes in, when these crop up. I get to go to God and say, I surrendered that today, and now it's cropping up. Can you remove it in this moment I'm in? And it's very handy, that 10 step. I don't know if everybody in this room has reached a 10 step, but you will be looking forward to that from everything I've said, right, Daniel? It's going to be exciting. Oh, well, it's going to be exciting. But actually, actually, it's very exciting now. Yeah? Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Daniel is but it's to the higher power, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's because he's tired of being an asshole. That's really fine. I just wasn't trying to me. You know what I love about, uh, uh, about <laughs> Daniel? Um, he doesn't take anything I say personally. And if he does, I'm going to ask him, if anything, I, if anything I say to you is really upsetting to you and you want me to cut the crap, please speak to your higher power and ask your higher power what what he would have you say to me instead of like oh my god you you're really mean to me and you hurt my feelings it's like what would God have you say you know what text I, I don't mind being I don't mind being teased sometimes but sometimes you get a little bit out of hand and it, and it does it, it annoys me see now that would be a mature conversation to have with oh, somebody. No, I, I, I love <laughs> no, no, but I love, but, I, but what I, I'm just giving you an example of, yeah. of if it did get on your nerves, the application of asking God to help me just say, you know what? <clears throat> it happens and it's not there yet. I mean, it's like, you see this phone here? Yeah. This was the king, the king Daniel, who not wait because the microphone of the other phone was not working perfectly. And the king Daniel could not wait and go and buy another phone, and he wanted to deliver it by Prime, Amazon Prime delivery day the next day because he couldn't wait. That's okay. right. To call who? Nobody. But he wanted the microphone to <laughs> fix and immediately. And the HP was not there with me at this moment. Uh oh. I was not. It was the king. It was the child. Uh huh. was impatient. Yes. Yeah. Well, that happens to see a lot. Isn't that nice that you can see this mm-hmm. and that there's a solution for that and that's turning to your higher power, hitting that pause button. It's just like stop me in my tracks. I'm about to get into. I'm about to get into to my dis ease. Look at that. We have a, we have a heart shape. Then, and I believe Rebecca's oh, here. Rebecca There's Rebecca. Yeah. She has a little sparkly heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, now this is this is something I really love. Or what you have a, back up a little bit towards you because when you do the move, then we don't see you and we want to see you. Oh well, maybe I maybe I'm just being annoying. I, I, I'm Pino- <laughs> I'm 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 Pinocchio. I got no strings to hold me down, to make me uh-huh. laugh, to make me proud. How's that? That's better, thank you. And how's that? You get to see my, my, my veins got really sweaty. See my sweaty veins? Okay, you ready? And Maria, you look beautiful. All right, now now this this, this part I love okay. right here. Life without the big ego is no new conception. 2,000 years ago. Christ preached the necessity of circle, losing one's life. I put a little arrow to the top margin 
and put ego and circle that because you can trade it, uh, trade the word ego. Christ preached the necessity of losing one's ego in order to find it again. So, and that's what they're talking about here, that only a higher power can help me uh, lose my capital E, ego, and find the lowercase E, ego. He did not say ego, big ego, but that was what he had in mind. I, I, I love that so much. So if I'm born again, like it, like it, I hated that when I read that in the big book. It's like born again. I don't want to be a born again anything, you know. It's like, okay, I'm building a new character. That's how I'm getting born again. I'm, I'm building a new character with no reference to the old character as much as I can through the day because I need to surrender my, my capital E ego. Yeah. So, uh, and that's what Christ was saying here. The analysts of our time recognize the same truth. They talk about ego, and I circled ego reduction. Tebow says no ego reduction. We must, we must give it, and, and a sort of seventh step helps because I'm asking God to take all of me, good and bad. And that's the th that's the same. That's why the application of step seven in the moment I'm in is so amazing, because um, I'm not just giving away part of my ego and keeping some the big ego. I'm asking God to do with me what you will. Yeah. You decide which of these character defects you need to remove in the moment I'm in, so that I may be of use to you and my fellows. I mean. As you, as you know, I think about these prayers and what they say all the time because it's telling me exactly what I need to do and why I need to do it. Mm -hmm. Because Tebow's telling me, uh, in, in his own words, uh, stop being in charge. This is this is and this is why you're in charge. Your characteristic of, of, of you know, the, the infant of the baby. And, 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 and but what, what I can do about it to reduce the uppercase ego to the lowercase ego and that is my deity God <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> sorry you guys I just can't help myself uh, okay Freud soul therapy as a running battle between the original circle Narcissism of the infant, his term for e big ego, it was narcissism of the infant, and the therapist whose talk it was to reduce the uh, that underlying original state to more manageable proportions. Can't do it on my power, need God. So Troy could not conceive of life without some message of the big ego. He never resolved the uh, underlying riddle of how contentment is achieved. You see, uh, from what I've heard, uh, uh, Freud was a, like a cokehead, so he was living in his disease. He didn't want to look at the big ego. Come on. Because for, for Freud, uh, underlying, man to the end was doomed. Sounds like my mind. I was doomed to strife and unhappiness and untreated alcoholism. That's how I feel. His dearest desires, keep underlining, sure to be frustrated by an unfriendly world. And that's, that, that's, that was what Freud thought. Now, I would call Freud irritable, restless, and discontented, fault finding, uh, very negative. So, uh, we can see what an untreated addiction or alcoholism, how our mind functions. Because I'm going to read this again because that's exactly how I felt when I came into rooms. Mm -hmm. That man, what, oh, man to the end was doomed to strife and unhappiness. My dearest desires 
sure to be frustrated by an unfriendly world. And, and, and I'm like, well, how that describes my alcoholism. In his studies on the addictions, and I circled addictions, Rado more explicitly asserts that the big ego circle must be reduced. So this is another therapist. Uh, he first portrays the big ego as follows. Once it was a baby, radiant with self-esteem, full of belief in the omnipotence of its wishes, of its, its thoughts, gestures, and worlds, I am the center of the universe, then on the process of big ego reduction, but the child's megalomania melted away under the inexorable pressure of experience. Its sense of its own sovereignty had to make room for a more modest self-evaluation. This process, first described by Freud, may be designated the reduction in size of the original little ego, and, and, and I circled, it is a painful procedure. <laughs> 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 and one that, and I underline, is possibly never completely carried out, which I'm going to be a parrot, and I'm going to just say it again, thank God we have that 10th step, because uh, it will never be completely carried out, because I'm a human, and these things will crop up, but I thank God I had the 10th step, so I can I can uh, have a solution with it. Um, no compromise with ego, like Freud, Rado thinks only in terms of reduction. The need for, underline, the complete elimination of the big ego is a stand which they cannot bring themselves to assume. Kibo does. Hence, they unwittingly advocate the retention of some of the infantile traits with no clear awareness that uh, underline trading with the devil, the big ego, no matter how carefully safeguarded, merely keeps him alive and likely at any occasion to erupt full force into action. <laughs> uh, I, I, I circled. There can be no successful compromise with ego. All of my ego tra traits are going to get me in trouble. They're, they're all pretty, pretty harm. Har they, they create harm to others and to myself. Okay, so. Uh, a fact not sufficiently appreciated by many, if if not most therapists. But um, Kibo sees from studying us alcoholics uh, that there can be no successful compromise with ego. It's all or nothing with us. Hence, step 10. Uh, thus, the dilemma encountered an ego reduction would be best resolved by underline recognizing that uh, circle the old ego must go and circle a new one take its place so that's what we're working on here but, but you see I need a power greater than me uh, to make that happen I can't do that on my own my ego is not going to allow that on my own power or so I need to ask my higher power can, can you help me reduce my capital E ego to my the, the little E ego? Yes, you can. God does, will, would and could if he were thought. So I need to go to God every time. I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. Big ego is killing me. Big ego is about to erupt and, and make a mess out of my life. So, uh... Underline, then no issue would arise, because because if, 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 if the old ego must go and the new one, we must build a new one, then no issue would arise about how much of the earliest elements may be retained. The answer, theoretically, is none. We're building a new character with a new ego with a little e. Actually, the total banishment of the initial state is difficult to achieve. Uh, circle, man can only grow in the direction of its complete 
elimination, its final expulsion, is a goal which we can only hope. And I put a little bracket by that last paragraph because, um, uh, uh, and I put in the margin so that that that's our solution. That that of uh, recognizing that the old ego must go, and and we want to take its place. And how do I do that? Well, I do that with in step ten with God, 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 God. You know, seventh step, take all of me, good and bad. Um. The second question right here is underline. How does the surrender action a reaction? Change the inner psychic picture. This question is based on a presupposition, namely that underlying surrender is an emotional step in which, circle the big ego, underlying at least for the time being, acknowledges that it is no longer supreme, and I circled no longer supreme. So it says that the, the surrender is, is like, like, like Issa was saying, that if I surrender my big ego to my higher power and say, I, I don't want to run the show, that's the power for my life, please, can you manage my life, at least for the time being, my big ego acknowledges it's no longer supreme. Why is it? What does it mean by emotional step? Just as we were saying, uh, wait, emotion. Hold on. Let me say, the question is based on presumption. Oh, uh, so, so, so the question is, how does the surrender reaction change the inner psychic picture? Uh, it, it, it's that the surre surrender is an emotional step. Yeah. So, so it, it's it's a uh, the psychic picture becomes it, it's an emotional step where I'm watching my e emotions and, and and I'm I'm going to God with this uh, to to because my ego is not going to accept that it's no longer supreme. It can only do that moment to moment to moment to moment with uh, a power greater than myself. I mm -hmm. know I didn't explain that very well, but um, now we're going into if it's an emotional. Now, now we can uh, be aware of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because now now that we've learned all of this, we can be conscious of it and aware of it, and we can we can change if we shift power. This acknowledgement, uh, underline, this acknowledgement, I underline the rest of this paragraph actually, uh, this acknowledgement is valueless if limited to consciousness. It must be accompanied by similar feelings in the unconscious. Now how do I make that happen? Well, I become conscious of it and I go to God. I, I make it a habit to, to not rely on the, the, unconscious tendency because I'm watching for them so now I'm aware of them and eventually it becomes it, it, the more you practice this the more it becomes an automatic pilot that that if, if something crops up and I know I'm about to blow you know uh, have an anger or, or an outburst or or a self-pity thing I, I notice it now because I'm aware of it and, and the thing is it doesn't feel good anymore you know, it says in the yeah. book that I enjoy all these, you know, to a certain degree. But but the thing is, eventually, my character de defects stop serving me, and I don't enjoy them anymore. And it's not the woman I want to be. So so have faith that all of this this eventually just naturally happens. The more we practice this, it just it just. Our emotions are in a much better, that's emotional sobriety because we are in a much better emotional state of mind when we're with the power greater than ourselves. Because it's okay to feel all your emotions. It's just I don't want to feel them with my character defects or my fears attached. I want to feel them with my higher power. You know? Is the drama of my mind going to help me through sadness? No, it's going to make it worse. 
if I ask my higher power to, to help me through sadness, he gives me ease and comfort. And he goes, everybody in the world gets sad sometimes. Just just let me soothe you for right now and carry you through this. And I'm like, oh, so much better than listening to myself talk. You shouldn't be sad. You're such a loser. You, you have so many blessings in your life. You know, you're such a loser. Why are you being sad? You're being a self you know, like, That's my self talk. So, and, and God is just like, you know what? Everybody gets sad. Just come here. Whenever you see me do this, uh, I have this, this habit of when I'm putting my head on God's shoulder, you'll, you'll see me, if you ever see me tilting my head back and a smile on my face, I'm resting my head on God's shoulder. Because <laughs> God sits on my right. Uh, we, we talked about that, you know, front, back, up, down, right, left. We talked about that last time. Uh, uh, okay, for the alcoholic, surrender is marked by the admission of being powerless over alcohol. Underline, his sobriety has that quality of peace and tranquility which makes for a lasting quiet within only if the surrender is effective in the unconscious and permanent as well. Well, the thing is that what I learned the, the, the longer I've been in here it is is that um, that, that I, I must surrender everything. You know, I must surrender. That's what step three is about. Like, you, know, uh, you manage my thoughts and my actions. And if, if I ask God to do that, I've surrendered my power to a higher power. Because uh, this is more, as we know, about everything in, in my thought life and my actions, my thoughts and my actions, not just alcohol. Alcohol was my solution until it, it, it couldn't keep up with my alcoholism. It couldn't treat it anymore. So, you know, they, they talk about that. You know, but a lot of people, that I, it took me a long time to realize Oh, yeah, I can surrender my alcohol, but I'm not going to surrender anything. I'm going to run the show in, in the other parts of my life because I do a good job. And then I find out in sobriety, no, I don't. And I'm like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. I'm going to have to learn to surrender everything and let ask God to help me with everything. And you know what? My life is so much better now. <laughs> uh Circle, the effects of surrender upon the psyche are extremely logical. Underline, the traits listed as characteristics of the big ego influence are canceled out. So the effect, I love that, the effects of the surrender upon the psyche are extremely logical. So it, the traits listed as the characteristics of that big ego, all those character defects, they're canceled out when I have a, a psychic change. Underline, the opposite of the king is the common. Underline, appropriately, alcohol is anonymous, stress is humility. Uh, the, uh, underline the rest of the paragraph. The opposite of impatience is the ability to take things in stride, to make an inner reality of the slogan, easy does it. The opposite of drive is staying in one position where one can be open-minded, receptive, and responsive. Now, you see, I need a higher power to do all of this. And, and I can see just from that description, boy, my life's going to be so much more comfortable if, if, I can, if I can go to God and ask God to help me be like this. Uh, circle, this picture of the non-big ego type of person might be amplified in many directions, but to do so would serve no immediate purpose. To have discussed the effect of the big ego upon behavior, and to have pointed out what may happen when the big ego is at least temporarily knocked out of action, is sufficient to make the point of this communication. Underline, it is the, encircle circle big ego, and underline, 
which is the circle, arch enemy of sobriety. Very important. The big ego is the arch enemy of sobriety. Underline, and it is the big ego which must be disposed of in the individual is, is to attain circle, a new way of life. You are no longer welcome. Up to this point, no clinical material has been submitted to confirm the ideas presented. So, no, no clinical proof, but, but, uh, uh, Chivo had the experience of watching these people and learning from them and observing and being able to put together this complex paper for us. Well, it wasn't even for us, it was actually for other people in the medical field, not, not us. Uh, uh, so, so it says here, uh, I, I where was I? Oh, their validity will be apparent to many therapists. One brief citation from clinical experience will be offered, however, in the hope that it may serve as a concrete illustration of these ideas. The patient, a man in his late 30s, had a long history of alcoholism. Uh, with seven years of futile attempts to recover through Alcoholics Anonymous, interspersed with countless admissions to drying out places. I think we all know people who go to rehabs over and over and over and over and go in and out, in and out, in and out. They just can't get this thing, right? Well, this is this is one of those guys. I mean, come on, seven years of that? Ouch. That's got to hurt. Um, then for reasons not, not totally clear, he decided to to take a drastic step. He determined to enter a sanitarium and place himself in the hands of a psychiatrist, a hitherto unheard of venture. Right there, I think that he had a surrender, to be honest, and he had a spiritual awakening that on his own power, he couldn't do this, that he needed some major help. And, and so he went to Tebow and, and, and said, lock me up, let's talk, Doc. Mm -hmm. um, he phoned to arrange a limited stay in a sanitarium where he could have regular interviews with me. From the outset, he was undeniably in earnest, although it was only after the first interview that he really let go and could talk freely about himself and the things that were going on inside him. After the usual preliminaries, the first interview started with a discussion of feelings and how they operate. Underline, the patient was questioned about the word, the big ego, as used at AA meetings. Underline, he confessed his ignorance like so many others do of its true meaning and listened with interest to brief remarks on how it works. Which is which is great, you know, because because this isn't really spoken about at meetings that much. This ego, well what is it? How does it function? So so this guy finally got locked up just so he could have a discussion on what was what he needed to surrender and what it was. I love Kibo. Before long, he was locating in himself some of the big ego forces, which hitherto he had been, underlined, vis vigorously denying. Uh, because ego is cunning, baffling, powerful. Because they, uh, circle, savored too much of vanity and selfishness. With that recognition, the patient made a made a revealing remark. He said, in all sincerity, my goodness, I never knew that. Underline, you know what you're just thinking up here, pointing to his head. Uh, and, and and then I, I circled, you think down here where you feel. Underline, placing his hands on his stomach. That's pretty revolutionary right there, huh? That's very revealing. 
where he could actually go, oh, I do all my thinking and my reacting and my, and my you know, from down here with my emotions. I, I, I don't really use my brain that as much as I thought. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, he was learning, I uh, underlined, was learning that, uh, and I circled, that, that his feelings had a mind of their own. Underline and that unless he heeded what they were saying, he could easily get into trouble. So now he's starting to watch his mind and watch his feelings. See how, how you know, thinking with his stomach is, is what's going on. Uh, he starts the application of that. He was facing the actuality of his circle, big ego, as a feeling element in his life. A step he was able to take because he was no longer going at full steam ahead. He had hit that pause button. His decision to place himself under care, a surrender of a sort, had quieted him and made him receptive. Able so so once he slowed down, he could be receptive of what you know the the the. Uh, new power, the higher power was was trying to show him and tell him. <laughs> Able to observe what was going on in himself, it was the beginning of a real inventory. The next insight he uncovered was even more startling. He had been requested routinely to report any dreams he would have. Much to his surprise, they appeared regularly during the period of contact. In his fifth dream, the patient found himself locked up in an institution because of his drinking. The interpretation offered, based upon relevant materials, was that the patient equated, underlined, any kind of stopping with being locked up. That his real difficulty lay in the fact that, underlined, he could not tolerate being stopped. And abstaining was merely another stopping he could not take. The patient's reaction to the interpretation was most significant. He remained silent for some little time. Then he began to talk, saying, I tell you, Doc, it was like this. I'd get drunk, maybe stay on it two or three days, then I'd go into one of those drying out places where I'd stay for five or six days and I'd be all over wanting a drink. He was in surrender at that moment. The, the ego was temporarily knocked out of play. Then I'd come out and stay sober, maybe a week, maybe a month, but pretty soon the thought would come into my mind, I want to drink. Maybe I'd go into a tavern and maybe not, but sooner or later, I'd go and I'd order a drink, but I wouldn't drink it right off. I'd put it on the bar, I'd look at it, and I'd think, and, then, and underline. Then I'd look and think, circle, king for a day. The connection between the big ego and his own conduct had been explicit, as well as the relationship between circle not being stopped and the big ego. He saw clearly that when underline he took that drink, he was the boss once more. And previous uh, underline reduction of ego had been only temporary. Uh, and then I circled in treatment and then I circled the problem is to make that reduction permanent. Uh, uh, underlying therapy is centered on the ways and means circle first of bringing the ego, the big ego to earth. Underline and second, uh, oh, I did, so I did circle second, keeping it there. That's what. Stay down, Tex. What? Stay down. Stay down. That's what our step 10 does. Uh, that's how we can keep it there. Is go to God, 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 ask for help.
<clears throat> so we have to become aware of it, right? The discussion of this method methodology would be out of place here, but it is relevant to emphasize one point, namely, underline the astounding capacity of the big ego to pass out of the picture and then re-enter it, life and intact. A patient's dream neatly depicted this quality. This patient dreamt that he was on the 12th floor balcony of a New York hotel. Notice he was on the 12th floor, 12 steps, blah. He threw a, <laughs> he threw a rubber ball to the pavement below and saw it rebound to the 12th step of the balcony. Much to his amazement, the ball again dropped again and rebounded to the same height. This continued for an indefinite period. As he was watching, a clock in a neighboring church fire struck nine. Ooh. <laughs> Underline. Throws this paragraph. Like a cat with nine lives, the big ego has a marvelous capacity to scramble back to safety. A little ruffled, perhaps, but soon operating with all its former upbloom, convinced once more that now it, and I circled, the big ego can master all events and push on ahead. In other words, I can reclaim the throne. Yes, and that's when we get in trouble, when we don't notice when the ego is reclaiming the throne. And that's why it tells me in the big book that I must give all credit for anything in my life to a higher power so that my ego does not try to take it and make it ego, fa ego fodder. And because, because if, I, if I give the credit to my ego, it's going to start making its recuperative return and start thinking... It, it is in the throne again. And so we have to be careful with taking any credit because, sure, I did it, but without God helping me, I couldn't have achieved it. And, I, and I'm truly convinced of that because on my own power, I ruin everything. And it may take a matter of time, but eventually I ruin it. So, so I have to see the difference and, and stay aware and stay aware of that, so that my ego does not get its power back. Underline the capacity of the ego to the big ego to bypass and let's circle experience. That's why, that's why it's just like oh, when people go back out and drink, oh, it'll be different this time. That's what their ego tells them because they bypass experience is astounding and would be humorous were it not so tragic in its consequences. Uh, underline, cutting the individual down to size, right size, and making the results last is a task never completely accomplished. Refer to step 10. Uh, the, the possibility of a uh, underline, a return of my big ego must be faced by every, a circle, every alcoholic. So that's a very strong truth right there. A return of my ego, big ego must be faced by every alcoholic, not just some of us, all of us, because it's so cunning, baffling, powerful, so and dangerous. So courage is power to get back to that. Yes. Underline, if it does return... He may refrain from drinking, but he will surely go in a circle dry drunk. Um, and we can call that untreated alcoholism. Uh, uh, underline the rest of this paragraph. With all the old feelings and attitudes, untreated alcoholism, once more asserting themselves and making sobriety a shambles of discontent and restlessness. Not to mention irritability. Not until the ego, the little ego, is decisively retired, or the big ego is decisively retired. I don't know why he didn't capitalize that one. 
but uh, that's the ego he's talking about. Uh, can peace and quiet again prevail? As one sees this struggle in process, uh, circle, the need for the helping hand of a deity becomes clearer. I need my higher power. I put that in the, in the margin of this one. I need my higher power. Can't do it on my own power. Mere men alone all too often seem powerless, circle that, powerless, to stay the force of the big ego. I'm powerless over this big ego. And boy, my life, my thought life, has, and my whole life has become unmanageable because of it. Uh, circle. He needs assistance, and he needs it urgently. Higher power. I love the way he skirts around that. You know, what well, war am I going to get? A higher power, higher power. We're, we're in, 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 in AA, we kind of drive it home. It was, especially in prime time, a lot of AA meetings, they won't talk about the G word. And, but in, in the elephant prime, in the room. Yeah, the elephant in the room. But, but, but us in prime time know that, 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 that those steps that I, I, I did AA light on, uh, that I, I didn't uh, put in the effort to, to form a relationship with that power and see what it could do for me and see how it treated me. Uh, if I didn't put that effort in, you know, that's why prime time we really hammer that home because that was the missing link for my recovery. I was depending on me to be the power or you to be the power. Intellectual I, license. Yes. I failed yeah. me. Y'all failed me. So finally, I had to I had to surrender and say, okay, I'll try this thing. Step two, I'm gonna open my mind. And I'm gonna try this thing, just like a scientist. I'm gonna research at this higher power thing with an open mind and see if it works for me without any reference to my old ideas. And and, and but boy, I tell you what, I had to really, really. Uh, because I had already given up alcohol, but, but you know, I, I was just so, I didn't want to give up the throne. I wanted to run the show. I, wanted, I didn't know it. And then the more I found out, well, why, why am I so miserable? Why do I suffer so much? And then, you know, and then I understood that line in the book. All my troubles were my own making. I, I, made, I made a decision based on self to serve the trouble. And it's like, true. But the more I apply this shit and the more I, I watch, I see how true all the and I went, okay, good, they're just helping me out by telling me this stuff. Now I have to apply it and see it for myself and 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 uh with an open mind so that I have my own experience. And uh the more you apply it, the more that experience becomes just it's just natural. It just it just comes. As it says in there, it, 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 it just comes. It really does. You know, it, it's a... Uh, and this is when it really, what we also mention, or, yeah, often is like this dropping from here to here. Yes, dropping from the head to the heart for those that are going to be listening to uh, the recording. And Everything. also what you've asked that question about, like, it is a, like a surrender, rea uh, like how does a sur surrender reaction change the inner psyche picture? And it really is like, it cannot be just consciousness then. It's like what it says here, I don't want to, um, it's like um, this acknowledgement is valueless if limited to consciousness. Mm -hmm. So it must be accompanied by similar feelings in the unconscious. So yeah. it's like, that's Dropping from the head to the heart. All of this stuff, you know, that's why it's great to ask God to help you read all this, you know, any kind of this, this literature we read, because um, God helps me slow down and, and absorb what it means and help, helps it go from my head to my heart. Because uh, if I slow down and I read this with, with great intention with God, I can feel what 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 this stuff means. I don't just know what it means, 
I could feel it. Feel, because, yeah. experience. Yeah. Like this, it's not here. It's yeah. not living here. And here is the mind function. Here yeah. is all that yeah. superior, inferior, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. I have. I can. I can intellectualize any of this stuff, and, and then I'm very good at. Yeah, and then I can use it to justify why I do things. So I can use this information and then for the alcoholism. My alcoholism loves, and my ego loves this. Oh, let's see. I am so smart, and I can use this against you. I can use my knowledge of the twelve steps against you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Looks like we had a little bit of a. Okay, so. We need assistance, and we need it urgent, like step two and three. Higher power, higher power, higher power, stop writing the show. Um, summary, can you believe it? Oh, my God. In the process of surrender, which the alcoholic necessarily undergoes, before his alcoholism can be arrested. So, even without alcohol... I must surrender every day for my alcoholism, the, the mind power disease, to be arrested, to treat my alcoholism. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, underline the part of the personality which must, you know, circle that word must, surrender is the da, 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 circle, inflated big ego. So it's telling me right there. That, that the part of my personality I must surrender on a daily basis in order to treat my alcoholism is my inflated ego. That's why step 10, I have to keep an eye on what my mind's telling me or what my my feeling. I can feel those character defects. And then what am I going to do? Wait. Hit the pause button. <laughs> and then talk to God. To okay, yeah. Well, yeah, but I usually just say, God, can you help me re- remove that? And, and what is the fear underneath that? What am I afraid I'm going to lose or not get? You know, because Queen Baby always wants her way. Always. Queen Baby always wants her way. And she's going to get upset if she doesn't get it. And you're going to make it, you're going to be on my resentment. If you don't do what I think you should do or treat me the way I think you should treat me, Man, you can be on my resentment list, and then I'm going to go cry to my sponsor. He did this to me. And, <laughs> and it's just like, it's just like, oh, really? Well, what were your expectations? How are you expecting him to treat you? Well, like a queen, of course. Well, is that realistic? No. So, so who really was, was acting out from their ego? Me. Oh, I can't believe how arrogant I was. I was so self-right. Oh, my God. Do I owe them an amends? And I'm like, well, did you do all that arrogance and then that self-righteousness out loud to them? Or did you just do it inside your head? Well, it's inside my head. Well, then, you <laughs> then, then the only harm you really caused is to yourself, not, not to the other person. And that is the unmanageable thought life. It's yeah. not just the external thing. Like, yeah. you're so good at, like, I'm so, you know, treated. I'm like this person now. But your mind is telling you. You're still suffering. Yeah, you're your mind is telling you, so. I'm better than all of yeah. you. Yeah. And that's also what Bob Anderson says about, like, modifying character. Our character. It can't be. It has to be no reference to the old one. But, but we also have to pay attention to it because even if we're saying it inside of our mind, we're not outspoken with our criticism or uh, opinions. If we're thinking it, we're still doing it. The unmanageable part. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So so we have to watch that because because I can go, uh-huh, uh-huh, and, and inside going, inside going, Fuck you, Isa. Yeah. Uh, and I can be smiling. Yeah, I get it. I, I agree. I don't agree with you, you fucking little bitch. <laughs> Inside my head. So, so just because, you know, I'm like a rattlesnake. I'm like a rattlesnake. Yeah. I'm a rattlesnake, like Bob A says. But that's the thing, like where you are right now, that's exactly like, I'd be worried if you're not. Yeah. If you're just presenting this sweet, nice amber. You know, there's nothing to work on anymore. 
But let me tell you something. If 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 maybe I was smiling at Esai, but my mind was being rotten, I don't beat myself up for it. I observe it. And then maybe in that moment I go, God, I was such an asshole. I wasn't an I, I don't know, it's a, a, an amends because I was an outspoken asshole. But man, my mind was tearing her a new asshole. God, can you help me? Let's look at this. Why was I doing that? And so then I get to see where the queen was not being served by Isa. And, and I get to see, uh, it's all my ego telling me, you know, what Isa should be doing to serve me. It's not, it's not Isa at all. It's, it's my ego telling me that the world and its people need to get on their fucking knees and do what I want. You know? And, 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 and that's, yeah. I and, mean, that's the thing. But, so, but, but I don't beat myself up for it. I just observe. You know, I'm such a terrible person because I'm Jesus. I, I love me. I, I don't sit there and I beat myself up. The book will be always there. Yeah, that's where we are powerless. Yeah, and we, get, and we have done that. That's where we push stop button. The pause button. Pause. Oh, a question? Yes. If, if I'm like, I'm in going into the, the beating myself up, is that that self-pity is also ego? Yes, right? it is. Yeah. Beating yourself up is, is, is your ego, mm -hmm. definitely. Because uh, God doesn't beat me up. You say I got so so if I'm beating myself up, I'm with I'm definitely with the wrong power. Mm. I need to go to God and say, you know what, I'm beating myself up. Can you help me see this differently? What, what do you see, God? Uh, am I as bad as my mind is telling me? Guilt and shame, ego, really, really big. But it's a lot deeper, uh, uh, a lot deeper than uh, beating myself up. Guilt and shame can go can can really lay me out if I buy into it, you know, because guilt and shame, they're pretty heavy, uh, emotions, and, and, uh, you know, so I have to, I have, I need God to help me with that, because the thing is, can I forgive myself for what I did? No, nope, I need God to help me see it differently, and, and, and to remember, I'm human, I make mistakes, I do bad things. God help me never do that again because I don't want to feel this shame and guilt, you know. And so I never, you know, that's that's what I love about this program because if I keep in mind that that people that do a inventory like as they describe, uh, Bill describes in that fourth step how how we do our inventory, how a store will do the inventory and look at the stock on the shelves. And they're not, they're not emotionally attached to it. They're not even having any emotional uh, shame and guilt for what, what's on the, the shelf. But they're going to say, okay, well, I, this isn't working. So I'm going to take this off. But, but you know, with our fourth step, we get to look at it and ask God how, how, you know, I look at it from a completely different angle and I need God to help me do that and say, and, and I see things like, oh, I don't know how to forgive myself. God, can you help me learn how to forgive myself? Because I don't want to feel that shame. Because I, I'm a human and I made a mistake. Progress, not perfection. None of us are perfect. I just, and, and that's why my favorite promise is, no matter how far down the scale I have gone, no matter how bad I've fucked up, my, my, uh, experience can help benefit another. So there's always a silver lining in this program, which I like. Even if I fuck up really bad in sobriety, and God helps me work through it, I can use that experience to have compassion and understanding and be helpful to someone else. And, and I, that's my favorite pro, uh, promise. Let me see if I can fit, fit, fit. Okay. The part of the personality which must surrender is the inflated ego. This aspect of personality was underlined, identified as immature traits carried over from infancy into adulthood. Specifically underlined, 
a feeling of omnipotence. I, I, I'm playing God. Uh, underline inability to tolerate frustration and excessive drive exhibited in the need to do all things in a hurry, precipitously. The manner in which Saruta affects the, the big ego was discussed and illustrated briefly through clinical experience. The object of therapy is a circle uh, is to permanently replace the old ego, big ego, and its activity. Thank you, Dr. Chiro, and thank you all for being so patient and loving and kind of I think that you probably have it in your head. What do I do in this situation? Oh, step 10. When things crop up, hit the pause button. Ask God to remove it. What would you have me do instead? What am I afraid of, God? Do I really want to be an asshole? Do I really want to get angry because someone told me no? Or all my demands? Do I have, do I have, a, you know, I, I can ask myself better questions. Wow, is that my demanding ego? Or am I just asking something, you know, just, what, what, what's that part in the book? Uh, I, my demands are, are a simple request, or is this a simple request? And now my ego has made it into a demand. Because it's afraid I'm not going to get my way. So instead of making a simple request, because I don't want to look weak, yeah, I, I want to let them know I really, really want this, and I really mean it, so I'm going to try to sell them on this, I, this demand. And if they say no, I'm going to have a little baby tag from it. And, and I might not do it. I might just do it in my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be smiling. Well, okay, so they said no. You said no, okay. But in my mind, I'm going, fuck it, asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't get my way. But, and, and so, you know, but that's where I learned to push that pause button and say, God, can you help me not use my character defects in this situation and, and, and help me communicate like a loving, kind, mature person? Or, or I go, okay, well, huh, can you tell me why you, why you turned down my idea? And then they might say, well, because of this, this, this. And then we may work together coming up with a better idea. Because they weren't saying, no, I don't want to work with you. They were saying, no, that idea is not going to work for me. Et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to turn this off unless anybody else has any questions or comments. Uh, I have a question. Do you put term Emotional sobriety. Emotional sobriety. How that relates to the ego, to the everlasting ego that is the big ego that is always there. How because the emotion. One thing with the other. Because um, if, if if I surrender my big ego to my higher power, I'm not going to have an emotional outburst of anger. Of, of self-righteousness, those are emotional outbursts that, that are from my, my ego, my, my character defects. So emotional sobriety is when I treat my mind, my thought life with these steps. My emotional sobriety actually starts in step two. Step one is exposing me to what I need to be treating with my thought life. And first of all, and then I have to put that plug in the jug because I'm I'm really not gonna you know just like just like when the first time I didn't get to use the the uh, I'm sorry I was drunk because I was sober then and then I start seeing things for the first time I can't use that anymore I'm sober now that doesn't make sense to me I can't say I, so what am I ooh I'm an asshole. So for the first time in my life, I get to see the truth. <laughs> and, and, and then, I mean, 
you really can't es- that that was a great example because you really can't it, you really can't escape the truth on that one because if you're not drinking anymore then you're just an asshole you know and 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 and, and you know that's a rude awakening but boy it's an awakening and the thing is about all of these awakenings I need to stay awake you see because if I go back into my ego and I start running the show again I'm sleeping again if I'm getting angry at you, but don't you dare get angry at me because you'll hurt my feelings, I'm, all, I'm asleep again. I'm not considering you at all. And then we get into this emotional hangover because we act out based on, like, you know, that's just the thing with us, like anger is just a human emotion, but we as alcoholics, we get into the Royal Highness Queen mm-hmm. baby. And like, um, also like the physical like sobriety, okay? Emotional. We had like the puking, we had all that hangover, but there's also yes. the emotional hangover of it. And this emotional hangover in relation to ego is that it is the mind function, the psyche of the child, like what we have just read through. And, um, it's, it's really then what I also share that I really liked, you know, that the, the thoughts become our emotions, emotions become our actions, our actions become yes. our life. Yes. So it's like our actions become our amends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have someone say emotional sobriety is like, um, so if I'm not in emotional sobriety, it's like I'll be happy if I get the when thing. this happens. Yeah, uh-huh. when this happens, and emotional sobriety is I'm okay even when. Yeah, yeah. Even without this, and yeah. that's also what we also uh, what we read about, like ego pattern, or what you mentioned. Mm-hmm. You know, like if we're just getting what we want, if the threat is removed, then we're happy. But yeah. that's just actually the ego, and not. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to end this discussion. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.